Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at the Infinix X1 Android TV from Infinix and it's a 43 inch TV. Funny enough, there's something written AI over here. I don't know if they're throwing AI everywhere, but since I already uh, had written an article about uh, the upcoming TV, uh, I know that Infinix wants to sort of uh, bring a smart home experience to customers. So this is the Infinix 08, which Infinix launched yesterday in the market. We already did a video about it a couple of weeks ago. So this is the Infinix 08. It's supposed to be a sort of smart home uh, system where you can communicate from the Infinix 08 to your TV. It's a full Android TV and it's certified by Google. So it has Chromecast built in. Uh, I'm going to show you all this after the unboxing. It has Google Play Store, it has YouTube, Netflix, and it also has Amazon Prime Video. So let us look at what's inside the box and uh, later on I'll show you uh, an app that I've seen on the Play Store called Infinix Life 2.0. Personally, I'm not aware of how it works, but I'm going to figure this out because Infinix uh, did not send any uh, sort of reviewer's guide for this, but we're going to figure it out together. So let's first look at the unboxing. So this is the front of the uh, box. Uh, the front is just written Infix X1 Android TV. At the top corner it's written AI 43 inch. And then at the bottom, uh, a couple of uh, specs or apps you'll be able to use with the uh, TV. So let me just cut this part open. This is one of the stands. You get the stands at the top. Uh, Another of the stands. Uh, nothing else at the top. So uh, here we have the TV. So basically, that's everything in the box. Something I haven't mentioned or was on the other side of the box. It's written HDR10, so it supports HDR10. In this big. Uh, extra bug you get the stand installation guide I don't believe you can see that uh, you get uh, the user manual if you have never used an Android TV it's good to read that uh, then you get the warranty card which I also don't believe you can see this is how the remote looks like quite tall, quite big. It has a Netflix and YouTube app. We'll check that out later on. Uh, you get this cable, uh, so it can pass audio and visual uh, through uh, one port. Uh, you get screwdrivers. Uh, the screwdrivers are for your uh, stand, which I'm about to install. Then you get uh, two AAA batteries for the remote. So uh, let's first install the stand. I've already set up the feet and it's already standing, it's over here. Uh, there's an Infinix branding at the bottom uh, and some lining over here. It's a frameless sort of look, so there are no bezels at the top. Of course, when the TV is on, there'll be bezels, but there are no bezels at the top. Uh, I haven't removed the stickers, but I'll remove those later on. So being a smart TV, there are a couple of questions people have uh, that I wish Infinix came out clear on. First of all, uh, it runs Android TV OS, the certified version from Google, that's a good thing. However, Infinix hasn't stated uh, the exact processor that they're using or the amount of RAM that they're using. Uh, on the website Xpack, where you can currently buy the TV, this particular TV for 29,000, it's currently listed as 29,599. So in itself, that's a good deal for a 43 inch TV. Uh, on the website, they haven't listed the specification, so we don't know the exact specifications, but they have said that it's a 64 bit processor and that it supports Dolby Audio, and that it runs Android TV 9.0, and that it has something called Epic 2.0 Image Engine. I already said it's a HDR display, 
so it's HDR10. Uh, the 32 inch version of this is also HDR10, but the 55 inch version, which I haven't seen or used, supports HDR10+. I wish they sent both models so that we could compare the HDR10 and HDR10+, but uh, those are the things we know as of now. Anyway, let's set it up and uh, let's see what it looks like. Okay, let's go. So it has some sort of music and it's written Infinix X, a smart lifestyle. There you go. So uh, you can set the language and location. Language is already in English. Let's choose Kenya as our location. Continue. Press the back and the minus. I don't know which button that is. And the volume down key simultaneously while pointing to the bottom within a distance of one meter for at least three seconds. So this is the Android pairing. You're told to skip this if your remote doesn't have the Google Assistant button. Funny enough, our remote doesn't have a Google Assistant button. As you can see, there's no Google Assistant button. So perhaps other models of this TV will have the Google Assistant. Uh, this is different. I didn't expect that. So no Google Assistant. Uh, Quickly set up, you get the usual Android TV setup you get with every Android TV. Uh, so you can set it up with your uh, Android phone. So let's just do that, continue. So you go to your Google app on your phone and then you say, set up my device. It will find the TV, then it will ask you to verify a code on your TV. Then it will connect to your Wi-Fi and then it will copy the details of your Google account from your phone to the TV. So once that data is copied, uh, you'll see that uh, it's signed in with my email and you're ready to use your smart TV uh, signed in to your personal Google account. So you get to choose a name for your TV. I'll just call it the Family Room TV. Uh, what I've noticed is with the lack of a Google Assistant button on the remote, uh, there will be no way to communicate with the TV directly from the remote. I have gotten something here telling me to input a password. I don't know what the password is for, uh, and there's no option to skip. Is there? I don't know what the password is for, but I'll just put one, two, three, four. I don't know. I've never seen that on my Android TVs. Uh, so you can select the TV mode. If you're going to use it in a supermarket, choose retail. If you're going to use it at home, choose home. Uh, select home mode here yeah, because you're going to use it at home. Chromecast built in. Uh, you can choose to have it off or on. I'm going to have it always on so that I can cast easily. Uh, tuner mode, since it's also a TV where you can connect uh, your uh, aerial, uh, you can choose, because in Kenya, most of us use an antenna. If you have cable TV or satellite TV, you can choose that. So I'll just choose antenna. But since I have no aerial, uh, the cable for the aerial is currently not connected, I'll just keep the scan for now. Just make sure you update everything and uh, before you use it. So. There are a couple of updates over here, as you can see. Okay, so a couple of things to uh, really take note of. Uh, the remote doesn't come uh, with a Google Assistant button, so you can't use Google Assistant from the remote. I guess there's another way to do that, but we'll figure that out as we go. The remote is also very, very light. Uh, that's a good thing. Now, looking at uh, the Infinix app, it's called Infinix Life. It's available on the Play Store. Uh, it's called Infinix Life 2.0. You can use it to uh, as a remote control for your TV and uh, where you can actually uh, choose to power on, volume, navigate, and other things. So to connect to it, just go to uh, the search for devices and then it will show you your TV on the app. Uh, 
you can use this app on any phone. It doesn't have to be an Infinix phone because it's available on the Play Store. So uh, from there, you can cast via Wi-Fi. If you have a Wi-Fi connection at home, you can choose cast via Wi-Fi. If you have no Wi-Fi, you can choose to cast via your phone hotspot. So it will create a hotspot from your phone and cast to it. You can also choose to mirror uh, the TV to your phone or to mirror phone to your TV or to use your phone as a mouse to the TV. This is something not every TV offers. Uh, let's talk about the ports that are uh, on this TV. So at the back, there's a headphone jack, uh, as you can see over here. Then there's a USB 2.0 port. There's an audiovisual uh, port. Uh, there's the Dolby uh, digital audio port. So you can use uh, uh, sound bars and all that. There's, then there's an, a satellite uh, port for antennas and for satellites. Then there's the normal antenna port and one HDMI port. So uh, the HDMI port hasn't been, uh, we haven't been told uh, the standard of the HDMI port. At the bottom, there's extra port. So there's a LAN port. You can't see it. It's to the top. There's a HDMI 3 port and a HDMI 2 port. Then there's another USB 2.0 port. So in total, there are a couple of ports here, and they're all really good. The other thing to take importance uh, is that the power cable is inbuilt, so you can't plug it out. It's inbuilt. You just have to carry it with you ev with the TV everywhere. OK, so a couple of things. I haven't been able to tell the full resolution of the TV. I guess it's 4K because uh, of HDR10 support. Another thing is uh, there are a couple of pre-installed apps. So let's uh, just talk about that. Uh, so there's Live TV where I've already connected to the antenna. So with the Live TV app, you can scan local channels. You go into settings and then you hit channel scan. So it will use the signal from the antenna to find local free to air channels. So you can watch free to air channels through it. The other thing is, uh, the other app is up the Pango browser. I think it's a TV browser. There's a media player, a help guide, an AI point, uh, which I believe connects, uh, helps you connect with a phone uh, so that you can uh, cast stuff from the phone. Uh, there's the Google Store where you can get apps, the multi-screen share, which I haven't gotten to test. I think it allows you to share yeah, it allows you to share stuff from your phone to the TV. Also works like uh, Chromecast, I believe. Uh, there's Netflix, there's Google Play Games, there's Prime Video, uh, there's YouTube Music, and there's TV Manager. Uh, TV Manager, this is what we needed, uh, shows you uh, the RAM. So uh, it has one GB RAM, uh, yeah, and it has uh, eight GB internal storage. Here you can clean, boost memory, and uninstall apps. Under settings, I've noticed that uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, you can go to device pre preferences. Under picture settings, uh, there's a couple of things you can do. So I've set it to uh, vivid mode for uh, the extra brightness and the extra color. Uh, gamma is set to middle as uh, default. You can choose dark or bright depending on uh, the place you'll be using the TV. Color temperature, I've uh, set it to cool. Under advanced video, you can choose DNR, I don't know what it means. MPEG NR, I don't know what it means. Adaptive Luma Control, I also don't know what that means. But there's a game mode and a PC mode. So if you be gaming with a uh, device, you can set it to game mode, which appears to be much sharper in contrast. Uh, there's a PC mode if, you, if you'll be using it as a display for your PC, which I guess is a good thing because of the size. Uh, there's a color tuner where you can enable uh, help you set uh, hue, saturation, brightness, and other st stuff. I'll leave that off for now. There's an 11 point white balance correction. It's set for at 5%. Uh, if you don't understand most of this stuff, I believe you should just leave it alone. There's also sound where you can uh, choose to balance the speakers. Uh, you can choose the digital audio output uh, if you have a sound bar. And you can choose whether to use it in stereo mode or uh, mixed down mode. Uh, sorry, mono mode, yeah. There's uh, settings for the home screen, to arrange the home screen. Uh, you can also switch to the retail mode if you're going to use it in a store or as a public display TV. So, uh, will I recommend it for 29,000? I believe for a 43-inch smart TV, this is one of the best deals. I'm not sure about the other company, Cynix, because they also have 43-inch TVs, but I believe it's a good uh, panel and a good TV at that uh, amount. 
the issue I'm seeing is that uh, the sharpness of the resolution is not quite good, uh, but I guess that's a setting I haven't gotten quite to understand. This is a couple of hours later. I've just finished sort of editing the video you're watching, and I've been using the display as my monitor for connecting it to the laptop and using it as my monitor uh, to sort of edit with it. I did that because I wanted to see the color uh, reproduction and you will tell me in the comment section if I've gotten uh, the colors uh, well because I had to tweak the colors for the video. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is I believe it's a 1080p display, it's not full 4K, though I stand to be corrected if that's wrong. Okay, so even if you go on to YouTube and try and play a video, uh, if you try and tune it to 4K, you'll find that the maximum uh, the video can play at is at 1080. So I believe it's a 1080p panel. Though that's not a problem because remember it's 29,000 for, for this display. Uh, the other thing I've noticed is that uh, when I'm in PC mode, if I'm using it as a, a sort of a display, the contrast is really good, the brightness and how it feels to the eye is really good. Uh, uh, the sharpness is also quite good when I'm using it as a display. Uh, for my monitor, for my laptop, but when you switch it to TV, it feels like uh, the contrast and sharpness is not quite good. Though I believe that's a setting I am yet to figure out how to sharpen and uh, have really good contrast. But I believe, but the good thing is if you move a few steps away from the TV, say you sit uh, to 1.5 to 2 meters away, uh, it it looks really good. The speakers are quite good. I've uh, been using the speakers to edit I didn't use headphones so I feel like the speakers are quite good though you'll tell me from the audio I don't have any games to play with it so I haven't tested gaming but I would still recommend it for the price point because at this price point you're getting a smart TV you don't have to sort of buy a Mi Box S later on or a Matic Box from Safaricom for example you can just have your smart TV experience from this so yeah I would recommend it so guys, uh, thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them down below.